you're listening to The Bounding Box, where we talk about web development, geo development, and everything in between. All right, welcome to The Bounding Box. So today I'm joined by a great guest here. I got Jeremy Bartley. Jeremy, please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, what you do. What's your problem? Hey, Renee. Uh, I'm Jeremy Bartley. I'm a CTO for uh, web mapping and geospatial web application technologies. Um, and uh, I've been at Esri for about 17 years now. And um, I've been trying to think about how to answer what's my problem question. <laughs> and I couldn't come up with a good one because I, I mean, we all got problems, but uh, nothing that are interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's always small fires to put out every day, right? You know, that's right. That's right. Things to deal with. No big deal. But Jeremy, you are a uh, true blue uh, geography fellow, right? I mean, you got the degree and everything, and you know your stuff, man, right? <laughs> uh, thanks, Renee. Yeah, man, I've been, uh, I got the geography bug uh, in college. Uh, I was taking a, a map appreciation class in my spring year of my freshman year in college, and I'd always loved maps, and uh, I just got hooked on it. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, you know, I, in graduate school, I became the uh you know I, I got interested in putting stuff on the on the web at the time this was like back in the you know uh late 90s wow um and uh yeah i think you know i got i really got the i really got the gis bug though i would say at, it was a little bit after the 2000 uh, election and i remember mapping i was in arc view 3 3.2 and i was mapping out the um the counties that Bush won and the counties that Gore won. Um, and then there's a couple of third parties, uh, Pat Buchanan and uh, Ralph Nader, <laughs> I think at the time. And then just seeing the patterns that uh, sort of emerged. And uh, I just was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing uh, to see this visual pattern based on the statistical data. And maybe ask, well, why? What is this belt here of blue or, you know, along the river, these blue counties coming down? Uh, so anyway, yeah, uh, that got me. That got me really hooked and uh, been uh, doing it ever since. Nice. Now, with all those years of geography, Jeremy, do you have any good geography jokes? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. A, I don't have any good geography jokes. Uh, Maybe the um, dirty ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, one at one time, um, you know, probably like I don't know, five, uh, five to ten years ago, I remember doing. Uh, smart mapping sessions at the UC with uh, Jim Harry's, and uh, we used to try. We also really like Seinfeld, so we used to try to turn uh, every teachable moment about smart mapping, illustrate that with some map that was related to Seinfeld. So uh, <laughs> we, it was good for a, a few laughs, uh, but I think uh, a lot of people who didn't know Seinfeld were like, "What are these idiots talking about?" <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Now, I think what's interesting too, and a lot of people may not uh, really know, it, is that I mean, you uh, worked on version 1.0 of the JavaScript API, right? Yeah, um, yeah, even uh, yeah, but even before the JavaScript API, um, uh, I started in uh, August of 2006, and um, I had known this. this uh, a uh, developer from Esri, K. Orshaw, who uh, no longer works at Esri, works at Google now, but we had met online. You know, I used to like to write blog posts about REST APIs and, you know, build some amateur ish REST <laughs> APIs for my uh, work at the University of Kansas. And and uh, he came into my office like four months after I started and was like, Jeremy, we should build a REST API for server. I was like, K. Hey, or that sounds <laughs> great. Let's do it. And uh, yeah, we kind of snowballed. Um, and uh, I mean, that was really like, an, it was a really amazing time, you know, cause like you know, Google had really proven with Google Maps, the power of JSON and making Ajax calls. And, um, and then, you know, the power of REST APIs and how you know, simple that made things. Um, that was a really exciting time. And I still remember like, I think it's a lot of it's still true to this day. Like what makes the REST API so good is it because it sits on the HTTP stack 
And Kayor Kayor used to call it HTTP goodness. And <laughs> it's so true. There's so much good thought that went into HTTP. Um, anyway, so we built <laughs> worked on the server REST API for 9.3. And uh, but then, you know, that wasn't really the answer. The answer was people want a simple, uh, easy to easy to use web mapping library um, similar to Google Maps. Yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, we put put together an uh, object model diagram that used to fit on one page <laughs> for, the, for the 1.0 JavaScript API with a uh, uh, developer at the time, Jayant Sai. And um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the rest was history. Actually, at that time, it was crazy because we did we did the you know our own JavaScript API, but we also did uh, extender uh, libraries for Google Maps, and it was Microsoft's Virtual Earth at the time, which then became oh, wow. Bing, which then became Azure yeah. Maps, and uh, so that was a very intense release, I should say. <laughs> so we released <laughs> REST API plus three JavaScript APIs, and uh, yeah, it was super exciting. That's fun. I remember do back then doing the. Um... The flex training out here in LA, and I can't. I think it might be the Pasadena. They sent me to do flex training, something like that, and it did the whole training. There was a whole day thing, and at the end of the day, like someone busted out like, "Oh, and by the way, we've also got this JavaScript API that maybe you might be interested in." And they showed. <laughs> then we spent about half an hour on it and stuff, going over a few pieces here and there, but it was still like very early. There was a lot of stuff flex had that we couldn't do a job, so it was fun. But it just it was really interesting the way they kind of like threw it in. Like, yeah, we know we got this other thing here that we're working on. And then, you know, a couple years later, like, that's it. That's that's what you're using. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was an exciting time. I think there was a lot of unknowns, and uh, there, was a, there was a lot of, you know, competing offerings. There's, you know, Flex, there's Silverlight, uh, JavaScript. Um, you know, at, the at that time, you know, JavaScript was kind of held back by, uh, you know, I Internet Explorer. Yeah, but uh, Chrome was really making a push, you know, with Chromium and then of course Firefox as well, and that really, you know, changed the game. Um, and uh, you know, eventually, you know, the web, you know, the web won out uh, over those other offerings. But it was an exciting time, and we worked closely together. Actually, the JavaScript team, the Flex team, the Silverlight team, we worked closely together at that time and kind of designed our APIs, um, you know, together. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, I mean, it was it, it was fun, and of course, a lot of the Flex team works on the JavaScript API today. <laughs> yeah, they all just kind of rolled over, right? Yeah, and it's nice because and it does. You see, you see that too. A lot of the those APIs, like when you're doing like you know identify and stuff, or working with layers, and everything that all just kind of worked in JavaScript. Too. You're familiar enough with it, what was going on, that you had a pretty good idea what's going on there. And I think that's part of what the power of the REST API is, because the fact is, if you look at like uh, REST calls and what you expect to get back and everything. It's going to be familiar whether you're working in runtime with a JavaScript API or something like that. You kind of know what to expect, which is kind of nice. They all kind oh, of yeah, talk talk sure. the same base language, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, that's great stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it was that was really a that was really a fun time because just to see the sort of like evolution of the browser in terms of what it could do. Like, I remember how excited we were um, when we could draw uh, 100 polygons on the screen. <laughs> and, and, then, and then I remember, you know, uh, how excited uh, Praveen, uh, who another developer on JavaScript, when we worked together on the 3x API, when we could draw all the counties in the US, all 3,200 counties. Wow. And then, then as, you know, that that's probably getting to be the most you could do with SVG, which is the graphics engine. Um, and then you really need to drop down. So when WebGL came out and uh, we started to build out our WebGL capabilities, then just to see how much that pushed the envelope. So, you know, drawing all 36,000 zip codes or all 76,000 census tracts, it's like it just keeps getting more and more powerful. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just been exciting to see the web sort of grow up to become this amazing platform uh, to deliver experiences to the world, including maps. And what would you say has been the biggest uh, game changer in all that? Would it be like WebGL in terms of pushing the maps escape forward and stuff? I mean, yeah, WebGL is huge because that gives you access to the GPU and uh, gets you much, much closer to what you could do on, on a native device. Um, I think that's definitely the that's definitely there. But, you know, with the web, you know, standardized 
more and more over time. And I think that, you know, it took a lot of time, but um, I think a lot of good decisions were made. And, you know, we're reaping the benefits of that today where we have um, you know, really powerful capabilities uh, in the browser, whether it's, you know, launching out workers or being able to do WebAssembly to bring native code in uh, for high performance calculations. Uh, yeah, of course, the GPU. Um, uh, it's just, uh, it's a great, it's a, it's a, it's a great platform to build on and uh, I've loved it every minute. <laughs> now, as far as like the ArcGIS platform goes, all the stuff that's going, I mean, we had like, well, it started like with ArcIMS, uh, basic maps in the day, then if you had a server installation, you had the option to create like ADF uh, apps. And I think there was even a JavaScript option after that as well. And all these different things the platform's done with map viewers, stuff like that. What has been some of the biggest changes you've seen in the ArcGIS platform over the years? And the way it's grown, because it's grown tremendously uh, on the yeah. web. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a great question, Renee. The, yeah, going back to ArcIMS, I mean, that, that, that was pretty revolutionary, I think, uh, at the time. Um, and uh, what they did for that was, was super powerful. And uh, they were building, you know, web applications with ArcIMS back in, you know, you know, the dark ages <laughs> of web development. I, you know, really like amazing they could make that work. But I got really into ArcIMS before I joined Esri. You know, I was a, uh, I was really into, you know, ArcIMS was a server-side mapping platform. So there's definitely no client work. In fact, at that time, I hated working with JavaScript because <laughs> it was, it was so brutal. Um, but you could do so many amazing visualizations uh, with ArcIMS, and uh, yeah, I I also built this uh, search engine uh, to help find all the ArcIMS sites that were out there in the world. And I think oh, wow. I think I got it was over forty thousand uh, uh, maps or, or ArcIMS services that I harvested, and uh, that's like six hundred thousand layers and like uh, you know, ten million columns of information that <laughs> you know you could get to, and it was like wow we're connected, you know, amazing. Wow. So that, you know, so ArcMS, I think was pretty far advanced back in the day, uh, but that was pre Ajax, you know, that was like, every time you pan the map, the whole page reloaded and a new, new map got, uh, you know, pushed to the server and you had to have your, you couldn't, you had to have your HTML app on the same machine as your ArcMS server, you know, to get around uh, browser cross-site uh, restrictions. Um, you know, then when, yeah, ArcGIS Server and ADF, um, that, you know, that, that didn't really work. Uh, and uh, that's just, that's just the, at that time, that's what, that's what the major um, tech companies were pushing. And, uh, you know, it, it really didn't work. And yeah, going back to that, what we talked about earlier, you know, with Google Maps and proving what it could do with Ajax. And I like to think of uh, that as the, the reason we have JSON is like the biggest hack in the world. Uh, but it's probably the most most important hack that's ever been done in computing, um, because you know JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it's about removing you know, all the functions from JavaScript and then getting around this uh, cross-site scripting limitation, so that you could load a script, but the script didn't actually contain code; it contained data, and you know a kind of that's the REST APIs took off from there. And of course today it's not a hack anymore because it's sort of built in cores. Um, but yeah, that, uh, that REST API for server, you know, building out um, uh, simple lightweight client mapping applications, that's huge for Esri. Um, and then probably the next next biggest thing is like what, what we've done with, in terms of what Esri's offered is what we've done in ArcGIS Online over the years. Um, and a couple of areas, so like one, one area is just like, <clears throat> this concept of a web map, this, uh, you know, specification for how Esri applications, you know, honor your web map. I think that's been huge for Esri because um, all of the apps that uh, we, you know, Esri's got a lot of mapping apps, right? From story maps to dashboards to instant apps to experience builder. Imagine if each of those apps, you had to go to them and build a map for within that app. And then like, every app would have done it different and and so on. But being able to start with the map that's already got the geographic information already set up, your pop-up set up, your uh, your maps, your layer styling set up, and then just bring that map into that application and then you know do what you need to do. That's been huge, I think, for 
for Esri and for our users. And um, yeah, it's been exciting to see that grow. Um, I think, yeah, the next part of Arches Online that I think is cool, that's really advanced, uh, is, uh, is the area of uh, feature services and feature layers. And, um, you know, you used to hear back in the day that, you know, GIS is like this back office technology. It's uh, it's back office because it's, you know, it's GIS people collaborating in the back office, but, you know, it can't scale. Like, you can't scale that out. To do that, you know, to do anything that reaches the public, you need to, you need to be doing something on Google or something like that. And then, and we definitely have proven that that is not the case. Um, you know, every, everybody's probably seen the Johns Hopkins COVID dashboard back in the day and uh, how that graduate student uh, and uh, the professor built that dashboard out. And um, like that was more popular in like May and uh, April and May of 2020 than like CNN or more popular. It was like a top 100 website in the entire world, this one dashboard. And, and you know, we saw it, like we were seeing with ArcGIS Online, seeing more than 175,000 queries per second. And like, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> um, but you know, held together, it worked, and um, that. So I think that that's been an exciting thing to see uh, as we get to, and you know, it gets back to the what we talked about at the very beginning: HTTP goodness, because the whole reason that that works is through caching and uh, knowing that you can cache something because it doesn't change regardless of you know what device you're on, what computer you're on. You're going to make the same request every time. And that's something that we've, you know, built into our JavaScript API since version 2.0, uh, tile-based feature queries. And uh, once you have that, um, then the server can do caching. Oh, well, you can cache in the browser, you can cache in the CDN, you can cache, um, you know, within your own within your own infrastructure like we do in ArcGIS Online um, to improve the performance so that you go to the database the least amount as possible. Um, and why that's cool is because it allows people to publish their information of record and then just use it. It's not like back in the day where if I publish this data or if I had this information of record data, I got to build a visualization layer. I got to build a, a vector tile cache. I got to build a, a raster tile cache. You know, you don't need to do that anymore. I can just take that layer, add it to my maps, and it just works. And when that data is updated, my maps updated, you know. Um, and what we see at ArcGIS Online is people taking that like, you know, so many levels deeper. You know, you got an organization that's producing, you know, the the daily COVID maps or the daily fire maps or on and on and on. And then everybody gets to use those. Uh, and we're not like we've moved way beyond, uh, you know, a distributed file share system uh, as a GIS community to something that's really connected uh, deeply. I mean, it's the same even just like in terms of like automation like people are out there automating entire map generation app generation stuff where they automate the creation of web maps they automate who that's shared to they automate uh what apps are getting created for that and then boom there's yeah, just true. stuff's like sent out there people get emails and go oh here's the latest updated app for whatever right yeah yeah for sure man that you're right that that opens up that angle and yeah it's like it, i think it's a it's a really exciting time to be in this field I, I think what 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 we see users doing with ArcGIS Online and the JavaScript API, of course, is actually really pushing information out, you know, where it needs to be. So whether you're a city who's letting, like, you know, you're um, a small city in Georgia or whatever, and you're letting the city know, you know, where you're going to be paving over the next uh, couple months, or when you're going to be spraying for mosquitoes, or you know. Uh, what's the plan? The plan changes for the land use plan. Uh, like people are able to share that out to the public. Where in the past, you know, maybe that was something that was printed, and if someone was really eager, they could go to it. But you didn't have it at your fingertips like you do today. You used to, you used to have to do that all the time. You get sent out from the county to go and uh, get copies of a paper map from somebody somewhere because it, it was too big to scan. Couldn't PDF right. it to us. <laughs> Such a pain. <laughs> for sure, man. For sure. So I want to ask you, is there any cool stuff you can let slip coming up in ArcGIS uh, online or the platform coming up end of the year, next year, anything like that? 
Um, I mean, you were just constantly evolving. You know, we uh, we do three releases a year, and uh, there's so all the teams are working hard and uh, evolving the capabilities. Yeah, I think web maps are getting even more and more capable, um, and uh, some exciting new layers coming down uh, down the pipe. Um, I think that uh, AI is going to be really interesting. Um, I mean, in a lot of ways, of course, but I think uh, AI in the context of improving the user experience is exciting. And uh, I'm excited to see what, you know, all these all the smart people in the world and at Esri do to make that uh, make that happen. And the other thing is like uh, actually something you're working on, Renee, which is to, you know, make web components uh, a first class citizen in the JavaScript API and uh, for mapping. And I'm super excited about that. I mean, web components are amazing. Like that, that's been one of the great features added to the web, I would say, over the last five years. That's going to be fun. That's a great passion project. I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's awesome because the web components, I, I feel that they really break down walls, you know, like in the past, you know, well, the, you know, Renee, how Esri works. Like Esri's not a top-down organization that says everybody must build their app this way. So each team, based on their skills and their interests, you know, decides to build an app a certain way. So we have some people who build with React, some people build with Ember, some people who don't use anything, you know, some people using uh, Vite. Um, and actually, that was a problem about uh, you know five years ago because you know, especially for you know ArcGIS Online, that's got all these web applications that. Um, you know, our users are making use of, whether it's in story maps or dashboard or web app builder, you know, we used to get like, hey, why does the chart behave this way in web app builder, but it behaves this way in dashboard? Like, what are you doing, Esri? Can't you, can't you get it right? Can't you just like collaborate within Esri? Yeah. And actually there's always, a, people do want to collaborate, but the technology was limiting then because, <laughs> hey, uh, if I'm built on React, uh, I don't want to take your, ember chart component and bring it in because now i'm bringing ember into my react app and that's just craziness you know so how comes web components native to the browser and um we really i mean there's still some things you got shenanigans you have to do across frameworks but it greatly reduces the friction there and so we're seeing it here at esri where teams are collaborating more uh they're building uh, not applications, but experiences for particular features that then can be used in other applications within Esri. And then, yeah, I mean, yeah, like the, the project that you're working on, our goal is to actually try to productize those and deliver them out for our developers. So, I mean, this part's really exciting and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I, I'm excited too. <laughs> All right, Jerry, well, I wanna be respectful of your time here, but before I let you go, you got any tips, tricks, words of advice for the listeners here today? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think this applies everywhere, but, you know, it's uh, you know, just be nice to people and, uh, you know, care about what people are doing. I think, you know, having, um, you know, being nice, being supportive, you know, checking in on people, yep. you know, that that's really important. Like that, because really, at the end of the day, relationships are how you get things done. Like you got to build that relationship up with people, whether you're in the same company or whether you're, you know, uh, you know, two different companies working together. You know, if you don't have that relationship um, with that that person or that team, then nothing's going to get done. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I just think you know, just being nice to people, checking in on them, uh, understanding why somebody might not be able to do something that you really need, and um, you know, don't let that like ruin your relationship with that person because that'll change over time and uh we've been building you know the, i talked about the web map uh, project and uh, that's one where we've collaborated across teams you know like there's the web team there's the desktop team and then there's the runtime team and um in that context it's all about relationships because you know we're trying to come up with uh you know you know the the best uh web experience but we we need to also be able to work in pro and vice versa and have everybody be in sync you know uh and that that wouldn't happen if we didn't you know build those relationships and uh collaborate and uh trust people um and uh you know everybody's trying to do the right thing so i think being optimistic on on that when you interact with people uh, the better things will be i think that's a good point everybody's trying to do the right thing right 
And, you know, yeah. when, when we're all working together and everybody's got the same goals at the end of the day, uh, things are going to turn out well, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Awesome, Jeremy. Well, I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks a lot, Renee. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh, uh, I really enjoy your podcast. I love hey. to do it. Thank thanks, you, man. Thank you for listening to The Bounty Box today. Please subscribe for more content.